Actor Olivia Munn is talking about her battle with breast cancer and a tool that she says saved her life. Munn revealed on Instagram just yesterday that she had a double mastectomy last year, four surgeries in all in 10 month period, she said. She posted this emotional video taken in the hospital during her treatment. Do it for him, do it for your baby. This stuff doesn't matter. I swear to God, I would just, I had a patient, she said I would give a limb to be alive. Yeah. But, Right. This is nothing. Right. You know? Thank you so much. I love you. I'm going to be there with you. Let's do it. I'm ready. Oh, my God, it got to me. Before the diagnosis, Munn says she had a normal mammogram, tested negative for 90 different cancer genes. She wrote on Instagram, I wouldn't have found my cancer for another year at my next scheduled mammogram, except that my OBGYN decided to calculate my breast cancer risk assessment score. The fact that she did that saved my life. With us now is Dr. Elisa Port. She's chief of breast surgery at Mount Sinai Health System in New York City. This story, uh, uh, some, anyway, somebody very close to me, I'm going through a, a, something similar with this, and so this, this struck a chord with me. But so I'm in, in awe and so grateful to her, Olivia Munn, that she's telling her story this way. I had never heard of this breast cancer risk assessment tool. Sure. It's something we should all be aware of, it seems. I'd never heard of this. Definitely, Gail. I mean, I think the most important thing is empowering patients to know about their individual risk. Most women, the average risk of getting breast cancer um, in their lifetime is about 10 to 12%. Mm -hmm. And then on the other far end of the spectrum, are women who carry genetic predisposition and their risk is about 60 to 80%. That's the highest risk. But she had all these positive tests though, Elisa. The, she had all of the negative, the genetic Yeah, that it, everything turned tests. out negative is what the, I mean. The yes. issue is, is that there's a lot of risk in between, between 10 and 80%. And the question is, how do you figure out what your risk is? And there are other factors that weigh in, separate from genetic predisposition, like just having a family history or having prior breast biopsies that show some funny looking cells called atypical cells. These are all things that a lot of women don't know can drive up their risk for getting breast cancer and could lead to the concept of added screening, which it seems like Olivia had and detected her breast cancer. So how do you measure this score or sure. how do you calculate this? We've put yep. up some of the tools uh, on the screen, yep. but what, is it a checklist or is it an actual physical test? It's, no, it's actually, and there's a few of them. Just so you know, there are different risk models. You can go online and do this. It's like a survey, oh. a yes or no survey, and it asks you a number of different questions. Questions related to your family history, questions related to whether or not you've had a breast biopsy or not and what it showed. Questions related to your reproductive history. What age did, as a woman, start getting her period? What age did she have children? Believe it or not, the reproductive factors have less of an effect overall than the other factors on pushing your risk higher. The two big ones that really push your risk higher are having a family history, which most women know about already. Remember, the risk assessment tool is important. It's very helpful to spit out a quantifiable number, but most women should know already, if they have a family history of breast cancer, that they're at higher risk than the average population. But so many people who don't have a family history of breast cancer are still getting breast cancer. That's exactly true. So, and none of us is not at risk. Um, 85 to 90% of women, Gail, as you point out, who get breast cancer have no family history. And so we're all at risk, and that's why when people come in and say, you know, I didn't think to get my mammogram, even though I'm 45 or 50, when the starting age is 40, that's the recommended guidelines for the general population, and women say, I didn't think to do these general screening tests because I didn't think I was at risk. But even the average woman's risk with no other risk factors, her risk is 10 to 12% over her lifetime. That's wow. enough wow. To, to be doing the appropriate screening tests. Well, people who are hearing Olivia's story today, what should we be doing? I think all women should be empowered. Know, know your risk. And whether that's going online by yourself or going to a doctor who can run this algorithm for you, those things will all give you a better idea of what you should be doing to be proactive about your health. Well, Dr. Port, really thank you for, for being here. and Thank you for the work you do. Thank As you. we were watching Olivia Munn's video, you, you mm. mentioned you're going to have four surgeries just today. Yes. That's amazing. Thank, thank you. Thank you.